Hey, what's up guys? Back for another video. Um, got some great stuff to show, so we'll figure out how to come back on a bit sooner this time. The last time, I think it was only about a month, maybe it's my last video. Uh, I don't know. Either way, it's December, almost Christmas. Um, if you celebrate that, and Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, all that. Cheers. Oh, some hot coffee. Uh, yeah, like I said, I got some great stuff to show. So let's just get into it. Hope everyone's doing well. All that jazz. Um, first up, Pop Workshop, Song of the Pterodactyl. Uh, let me put a little bit of this on, actually. Oh, so it's good to hear jazz rock, jazz fusion. Um, recorded in Sweden from 1974. This is their second record. I believe their first one was just called Volume 1, had a black cover, I like the artwork on this one. Cool dinosaur, rockin' dinosaur with the guitar there. So this album actually has Tony Williams on drums, and some Polish players as well. There you go. Um, yeah, Jazz Rock, Jazz Fusion, Sweden. I believe these guys only put out two records, this one and then one, like maybe one a year before this one called Volume 1, um, has a black cover, the other one. Anyways, fantastic. Not really as uh, as folky as some of the other Swedish jazz fusion stuff might be. Um, I know some of that stuff gets kind of folky, so. Um, yeah, I like it. Check it out. If you like what you hear. Not the easiest thing to find here, unfortunately, but still a great record. Next up, some black jazz. Second Wave from Roland Hayes. This is from 1975. White label promo. Sorry about the glare if there is one. Can't do anything about that. Bad lighting. Um, yeah, Roland Hayes is a keyboardist. Um, two keyboards on here Roland Hayes and Kirk Leitze. Henry Franklin on bass. Carl Burnett on drums. Produced by Gene Russell as usual. Um, fantastic, funky jazz. Um, has some great um, modal moments on here as well. The, um, the first track on here, Elise, or Eglise, is a uh, pretty spacey, spacey type jazz, so a little bit of everything on here. Um, great record, though. Love this one. If you can find it, definitely uh, pick it up. Not one of the easiest black jazz records to uh, pull, though, from what I've noticed. Next up, my favorite Doug Hammond record. This is Folks from 1980. There's the lineup right there. If you go see Cecil McBee, as always, he's on everything. Uh, Byard Lancaster. Yeah, so uh, Hubert Eves on uh, piano. Marvin Blackman. Fantastic. Spiritual jazz type stuff. Definitely recommend picking this one up if you can find it. Once again, not the easiest thing to find, but if you can, like I said, it's my favorite uh, Doug Hammond joint, so... Definitely worth checking out if you're into that spiritual jazz type thing. She's next to here, moving into some Polish jazz. Haven't shown you Polish jazz in a while. Um, you know, I'll probably put this on. Turn this off. This is the Andrzej Kurilevich Quintet, 10 plus 8, and from 67 or 68. Um, sort of a really nice combination of like um, adventurous modal jazz, free, uh, free jazz, improvisations. Um, although there are some compositions on here as well, so um, he played a, with a lot of different groups, and he played his own with it. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me, all tongue tied. He played with his own groups and in a bunch of different groups. Um, sorry, tired. Anyways, this is probably his most um, out there record, I would say, in terms of all of his work. This is definitely his most free. Um, yeah. Check it out, though. I believe the whole thing is on YouTube sample, so... Like I said, it gets free at times. A um, bit more rhythmic other times, but... I think it's fantastic. And right along with that, I picked up... Uh, Grupa Orgonova Krzysztofa Sadowskiego, so... Christopher Sadowskiego's organ group. Um, Christopher Sadowski is a... Um, organ and piano player. I believe he mostly plays organ on this. I'm gonna say it's been a while since I listened to it. 
Um, yeah, all Polish players, I believe. Um, oh, Eddie Angles, I don't think, is a Polish player, but everyone, everyone else. Music is basically, um, once again, everything from jazz rock fusion, jazz funk, free jazz, kind of all over the place, and a really spacey theme going on there. I think the space race was kind of a big thing in uh, Eastern Europe at the time, so that's kind of why, uh, yeah, kind of why that cover is like that. So, on the Pronet label, Pronet, sort of a well-known label in the Polish jazz scenes, but really interesting record. I dig it. This is Chico Freeman, Kings of Mali. Um, unfortunately, had a bit of an injury there on the bottom, but got it for a really decent price. It's from 1978 on Indian Navigation. Um, dedicated to the Kingdom of Mali, I believe. Hence the name. Um, yeah, four original compositions from Chico Freeman. But great, just post-bop, avant-garde type stuff. Yep, Jay Hogger and Vibes. Cecil McBee, once again on bass. Um, Anthony Davis on piano, Don Moy from Art Ensemble on, um, on percussion and drums, and Chico Freeman on sax, flute. Um, yeah, so Chico Freeman doing his thing. Not much to say about that. Next up here, managed to find one of my biggest wants ever. This was top of my list um, for years. Finally, finally found it thanks to a trade. So, Horace Tapscott, The Giant is Awakened. This was my number one want forever. I just love this record. So good. Amazing debut record from Horace Tapscott. Uh, free jazz, spiritual jazz, contemporary jazz. It's one of those records that I get chills every time I hear it. Um, you know, there's certain records that you just feel like you have a deeper connection either because, for whatever reason, either there's a moment when you're listening to it and something happened something profound or this was one of those records for me i just love it i think it's fantastic um features arthur Blythe on sax um of course tap scott is a piano player I'm not familiar with him some staining on the inside but the record is in great shape um, yeah horace tap scott piano arthur Blythe on sax Two bass players, David Bryant, Walter Savage, and Everett Brown Jr. on drums. I love this record. Not much more to say. You know what? I'll put a little bit of this on. So you guys can get a feel for this is the let me put it on. This is the title track off The Giant is Awakened called The Giant is Awakened. Hopefully turn it up a little bit. Okay. I'm not gonna say anything else about it, go check it out. I love it personally. I don't think I said this was on Flying Dutchman, actually, so not a label always known for putting out jazz, but they did put out some quality jazz um, jazz records, for sure. So happy to have this. Without having to overpay a buttload of money. It's jumped up a lot in recent years. Even a handful of years ago, I could still get it for... 100 bucks, under 100 bucks. I've seen it around, but I didn't get it in time, and you know how that goes. Anyways, moving on to some Detroit jazz. Um, Gryat Galaxy, Opus Krampus, their second album. I believe their final. They might have had one more. I think they put out like a live album in 2003 or something. But this is from 1985, their second record on sound aspects. Um, a lot more rhythmic. It's still avant-garde, but not as out as their free record. I like this one a bit more than their first one, personally. I think it's probably my favorite work from them. Um, yeah, fantastic. Farouk Bay. Awesome, awesome musician. Love everything he does. Um, or he did. Fortunately, he's passed away, but still. Great record. Happy to have this. Um, once again, got it for a decent price, so. Really cool. Right, Galaxy, Freud Jazz. A Coltrane record I did not have is, is Concert in Japan, um, recorded in 66, but didn't come out until 73, I want to say, yep. Um, second lineup on this, so you got John Coltrane, Pharaoh Sanders, Alice Coltrane, Jimmy Garrison, Rashid Ali. 
I've always liked Alice with John Coltrane. I know it's not everyone's bag, but this is like her her own music and with John Coltrane, so they made a great pair. This is the gatefold. Um, awesome, awesome version of Peace on Earth on here, or Peace. Um, I think like 20, 25 minutes or so. Uh, yeah, fantastic. Pretty cool artwork on this too. Even though I'm not really as into the more out there free jazz right now, I still collect it, obviously. The ones that I think are essential, like pieces like this from Coltrane and other stuff, but yeah, happy to have this. Got this from my buddy Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Happy to see this. Appreciate it. Another one I picked up from some friends um, moving away from the free jazz onto some funk. So this is Black Octopus by Paul Jackson. Um, basically, Paul Jackson was a member of the Headhunters, and that's what this is. Members of the Headhunters, including Herbie Hancock, playing some fantastic funk, funky jazz. Um, this is a Japanese pressing only. It's on Eastbound. Um, no Obi, unfortunately, and the record, or the record is fine, but the cover is a bit messed up, as you can see. The name of the record is usually down here, but something happened. We got stuck to another record. Some water damage action going on, fortunately, but... I got it for a good price from the dudes at Music Research Library in Providence, Rhode Island. If you ever find yourself in Providence, definitely go check out Zach and Voss. They're awesome dudes. Um, I always try to grab something from them whenever I'm out there, whenever I see them at record shows. Fantastic dudes. Um, just cool ass dudes. It's cool to chill with, talk about music. So, If you like this type of stuff, jazz, funk, soul, hip hop, definitely go check out their place in, uh, in Providence. Yeah, but like I said, Headhunters type jazz, if you're into Headhunters, that funky style jazz, you'll probably love this. It's a nice placeholder if I find a uh, better cover. This is fantastic, I love this title track. Um, moving on, Max Rhodes Quartet, Namo. This is another Japanese pressing. This one is from 76, I believe, although it was recorded in Switzerland um, in 76. It wasn't put out until 78 and only in Japan. Missing the OB, unfortunately, but once again, one I got for a decent price on the JVC. What label is this on? Uh, I think it's on Victor. Victor JVC or something like that. You have uh, Cecil Bridgewater on trumpet. Billy Harper on tenor sax, who has a monstrous, monstrous solo at the beginning of side two. So good. Uh, Reggie Workman on bass, Max Roach on drums. It's one long track called Namo, um, written by Jaime Merritt from the uh, um, Art Blakey Jazz, Jazz Messengers. So, Max Roach, Namo, damn good, highly recommend it. The music itself, like a mix of uh, post bop and free jazz, I would say. Best way to uh, describe it. Yeah, really nice mix of those two styles, but definitely, I think Van showed this originally and uh, years, years back and put it on my radar. Never never came across a copy until now, so I'm really happy to have this. Moving on to some European jazz, which I don't see a lot. This is Graham Collier, um, Down Another Road. You know what, let me put some of this on, actually. So this is fantastic. UK Jazz. Like I said, I don't see this really at all, but have to luck into this one for a really decent price. Um, I believe this is, yeah, I'll just start the album and uh, probably play it to the rest of the video. So this is from 1969 on the Fontana label. Um, the music itself is kind of a mix of I guess contemporary jazz, uh, post bop, modal jazz, free jazz at times, kind of all over the place. Some great soloing, soloing work, excuse me, by uh, Harry Beckett, who I believe plays flugelhorn on this, Stan Schulzman on uh, saxophones, uh, Nick Evans on trombone, they all have great, great um, solos. Nice mix of compositions and improvisations, so if that sounds like your thing, then definitely worth checking out. Um, some fantastic UK jazz. I don't never see this. I guess it's hard to find in the UK too, so I'm not surprised I never see it. But um, I'd love to find some more, but like I said, just really scarce. 
never pops up. So really happy to have this. This is an original on a, I guess a Fontana, so really cool. Starts off kind of chill, then gets more uh, gets more out for sure as it gets going. Cheers to the James Buttery slurp. I'm trying not to slurp my coffee though. Um, next up, these three records I got from same person. This dude who I guess is a real estate agent ended up coming across a collection somehow. Um, anyways, yeah, this is one of the records from there. This is Dewan Muhammad Deep Stream. I don't know too much about this other than. Um, some great, great uh, spiritual jazz type stuff. Kind of a uh, deep jazz, some nice vocals on this for sure as well. Um, yeah, spiritual jazz type vocals, melodic, really cool. I know um, this was on the one of the, the Jasmine spiritual jazz sessions. I think it was on Islam, the last one, volume seven or eight. I think it's seven. Um, yeah, I know one of the tracks was on that, so. Um, this is from 79, and then he didn't release anything else until like later on. I want to say like 2000. Could be wrong about that, but I know he didn't release anything else for a while after this one. Um, yeah, definitely uh, Alu Akbar. So definitely, he's definitely a Muslim. Definitely fits on that Islam comp. Um, the only person of person I knew of noteworthiness on here was Prince Lachey, who plays drums and percussion on side two. Otherwise, I wasn't really as familiar with any of the players on here, so... Dewan Muhammad himself is a multi-instrumentalist, though. He plays uh, saxophones, flutes, bass clarinet, uh, pianos, drums, congas, so all, all sorts of stuff. Recorded in California, I believe. Like I said, I don't know where he's from, I don't know anything else, anything else about him, but... It's a great, um, great spiritual jazz record, so... Definitely worth checking out. I know there's at least one track on, uh, on YouTube. Next up here, kind of in the same vein, more spiritual jazz type, um, flute jazz, modally at times. This is Ken Eanes with Fresh Air, and the same same type of deal with this. Um, one record, this is the only record I believe that he put out. I don't think he even played on anything else as far as I know. I haven't really looked them up. Um, he did, does do a, or they do I should say, because this is a group, it's not just him. They do a um, cover of... Lloyd McNeil, his track, oh, I'm gonna butcher this, Tiz, Tiz Gane, T-Z-I-G-A-N-E, it's off the album Tori, um, you guys could look that track up, but yeah, great, great Lloyd McNeil cover, like I said, flute jazz, spiritual jazz, modal at times, I know there's at least one modalish type track on here, um, the rest of the players on here, once again, I wasn't really as familiar with, so I'll probably just show it if I can, there you go. Sorry if there's any type of glare, can't do anything about that, but yeah, Shizuko Yokohama on piano, Kent Eanes plays flute and piccolo, Ed Friedland on bass, Fukishi Tayanka on drums, wow, I'm going to butcher these names, Mike Kayoma on tenor sax, Kevin Brill on percussion, I don't know any of those guys, but fantastic record, um, maybe they did more, maybe he did other stuff, if you guys know anything about it, let me know, because like I said, as far as I know, it's a one-off. Doesn't, it's not really rare, although it doesn't come up too often. Although when it does, it usually doesn't go for a lot. I think I got that for uh, 20 bucks, I believe. And the last one here from um, the same dude was Ralph Thomas, Eastern Standard Time. This one's a lot uh, more well-known, I think. Although another sort of private press type thing. Um, one off, I don't know if he put out a lot more records after this. This is a label, pretty plain label. This one is a bit more varied in styles, kind of everything from free jazz to spiritual tracks to funky. Um, I love the whole first side, kind of chill, spiritualist. There's a nice funky track on side two. Uh, love that middle track on side two. And once again, another line of that. I really aren't uh, too familiar with. So Ralph Thomas plays saxophones, flute. Uh, Joel Ector, electric and acoustic bass. I know he does some writing on here as well. I know he wrote at least uh, one of the tracks. At least just one. I think the rest are uh, Ralph Thomas. Um, 
So we have Joe Lecter, Theory, Sharif on guitar, Lawrence Dixon, keyboards, marimba, Joel Versett on drums and percussion, Joanne Lewenthal on flute, and Thomas War on percussion. So, yeah, not really, I said, not really familiar with the players. If you guys know anything else they might have did, or if it's in the same style, let me know. But, great record, um, sort of over the place in style, but still kind of rooted in that spiritual jazz vein. So, I love it. I think it's great. I know there's a few tracks off this on, um, on YouTube, so check it out if you're interested. Uh, music's probably sort of quiet, sorry about that, but. And just a few more here. Rounding it off, we have uh, Billy Harper, Soren Bushy, another Japanese only pressing. Um, one I didn't have from him, this is from 1978 on Denon. Um, yeah, late. Billy Harper, late 70s Billy Harper, what do you say? It's fantastic Coltrane, post Coltrane inspired spiritual jazz. You know, what else is there to say? This is awesome. Horace Yarrow plays on this, Billy Hart as well. Um, yeah, I know there's for sure, I think this whole album is on YouTube, but definitely if you love Billy Harper, like I do, um, check it out for sure. Just a few more here. Pick this one up from David Belson on um, the last record for I went to. Thank you, David, if you happen to see this. This is a later Kent McIntyre record, Home. Um, it's basically post bop, not really as out as some of his previous stuff. Definitely, um, yeah, not as out there at all, but still really cool. Jackie Byard, Reggie Workman, Andre Strober was a great drummer. He actually drummed on the uh, play on the Descendants of Mike and Phoebe on Strata East, it's one of my favorite records, so. Which I knew him from um, Reggie Workman's fantastic bass player. Jackie Byer, I'm not the biggest fan of personally. He's a good player, but not one of my favorites um, when it comes to piano. So, not that he's a bad player or anything, um, far from it, but it's not one of my favorite. I don't really collect this stuff or anything, but still, he did great on this. So, Ken McIntyre at home. Just some good post bop. Definitely worth checking out. And lastly, here. I got from a local record show. This is Ahmad Jamal. Jamal plays Jamal. Just mid 70s Ahmad Jamal. <laughs> More funky as hell jazz. Um, if you like that funky, you know, mid 70s period Ahmad Jamal. His uh, trio recording, which I'm still looking for by the way, then you'll love this. I got this for cheap um, from my buddy Ross. So thank you, Ross. You probably won't see this either, but appreciate it. Um, five bucks for this. Can't go wrong. Has a few, you know, light surface scratches, scuffs, but still plays fine. So. Really happy to have this. Didn't really feel like paying 40 bucks for it, so. All right, that's it, guys. Uh, have a good Christmas. Probably won't be back before then. Probably be back um, sometime in January, so. Thanks for watching. Leave me comments if you want. Talk to you later. Peace.